Hi, my name is Kieran. I'm an animator at ICON here in Vancouver. Um, here we have an animation done by Owen Fern. It was July's Anim Challenge. He won the Pokemon one. Um, I will say now, I already did this review and then realized I've recorded the whole thing and not screen recorded. So hopefully this one works, but I'll go through the notes probably a lot quicker this time. Um, well done. Let me just say that, it looks great. It's, it's well animated. It's hard to give notes on something when the person who's done it is clearly not a student. But I guess we're all students, we can always learn. But you obviously know how to animate. And so I'm just going to give very like specific policy notes and my take on this. So we're going to do a little once over. Lovely. Okay, so I'm just going to jump straight in. You know it's good because you won, obviously. Now, the main thing for me was, I think I would call it staging if I was going to pick one of the 12 principles. When I'm watching this, I'm thinking, okay, so she's fishing. So obviously there's something to be looking at over here. But I notice then when it pulls down, I'm expecting something. You know, just, you know, anticipation. I'm expecting something to go out up here. Maybe the camera would follow it. But it threw me off, and maybe it was your intention, but it really threw me off to see something come out this way. Oops, come out that way. Because you've set it up that, you know, a bay fish is now pulling it down, and I would imagine then it springs back out, flies out this way, the opposite way. Now, I'm, I'm guessing you chose to do this because you obviously wanted both faces to be towards camera, like to make it a bit more obvious who we're looking at. Um, but in that case, then I wonder if there could have been a staging difference, you know, like maybe the, maybe everything was a bit more, you know, Hotel Transylvania because everything's quite cartoony to be fair, but maybe some, everything was, is quite flat and you see the, rather than the Pokemon flying out this way towards camera, maybe it flies out from the side or something across screen. Um, or the fishing line, just, just the fishing rod could have been, you know, out this way, just to make it clearer. And then the Pokemon sort of like jumps out this way. Just something uh, about this threw me off. And it's hard to um, say how I'd fix it without sort of unraveling the entire shot. It's just um, that it threw me off that the Pokemon came out the other side. That said, I'd like to just give notes on the actual animation. Um, I was thinking that maybe another little, um, you know, fix for that, I suppose, would be to have like the fishing lines sort or of pulling out this, this way. Maybe the boat would be tilted a bit more, perhaps. And then I suppose then it's pulling that way. And maybe when the Pokemon shoots out the back, it's got it's back to us and then it as if as if it's this is the boat as if this is a boat and it's swimming backwards it's pull, pulling the fishing rod this way and then when it sort of throws itself out it comes up with its back to us and then turns towards us that way i think i would probably read that a bit better like it's sort of throwing her off as well as the audience if that kind of makes sense um it's hard to just, it's probably not even worth me drawing it i think it just makes more sense that we see the back of the pokemon and then it turns towards us maybe that would help just sell it but overall that that was the main thing that caught my eye and when it comes to the animation itself it's it's really lovely um one major thing i was saying in the last few review um this is a note, this is, I suppose, a note or a tip I was given years ago by, you know, I think it was Nick Bruno, maybe, the, the director at Blue Sky. He's, he, he said, basically, juniors or, like, people who are new to animation tend to, like, 
really go over the top with them, squash and stretch and overlap just to like show off that they can animate because it's really fun to do. But sort of the more um, senior you become, I suppose, and I don't want to sound too pretentious here, but the more senior you become, I imagine, uh, I mean, I'd say this is the case for me as, as I've been doing this, you kind of pick your battles, you choose where you're going to do the squash and stretch and you don't really need to do it as much. And the reason I say that is because in this shot, I would say most of the um, squash and stretch you've done, it's like very obvious. It's like I can see it. You want to feel squash and stretch. Um, and I will say this, I went through your re uh, either your reel or like something with Vimeo, and I noticed it didn't seem like that in other shots. So I, I would say specific to this one. So don't take this too personally. I just think maybe you're having fun with this. You just went a bit over the top. But I just think like overall, like say I say here, I can see, for example, on this frame here, that I can see this the, the stretch of the jaw and that coming into a set of like three frames. Now I don't personally want to see that. You know, I think it would look better if um, you know you felt it here, maybe just one frame here. I think I already already um, drew it somewhere a little later. Uh, yeah, I said somewhere here, but I'll, I'll pick this one here. So you've got one stretch here and you've got another one and then another one and it takes like three frames for that jaw to sell. I think you at max could have picked, you know, maybe this one stretch frame, but then make the rest, just keep it within its more human structured form. So I think the stretch is really like too obvious for me. But, you know, it's, it's a personal taste. So take what you will from these notes. Um, so you've got really nice stuff like the shoulders leading here with the, with the head holding back. That stuff looks lovely. One note I, I, I think, considering everything is very squash and stretchy, I was thinking here when the head hits the boat, I think you could have done actually with, with the squash. You've got the stretch on the frame before. I thought maybe when the head hits, it was squashed a bit and then it sort of settles back to normal. So on the hit, on the actual impact, it's, it's squashed. And that way it would feel a bit more fleshy there. Because right now it, I can like see the rig. I can see that it just sort of stops moving. And I think you maybe that was a space to get a bit more like you know, little squash. Maybe the, the lips could, could be like, you know, poked out a little bit more. And their cheeks would be like puffed out, and then they sort of return back to default. That that this specific spot stood out as a bit stiff. Um, yeah, it's very clear here. You know, we see. I like this. This is good stage. You see that that moving first, the, the fishing rod. Then she looks. You know, that that draws the eye nicely. So keep that stuff up. It's nice to keep the eye drawn. <laughs> Then the, I would say this this bit here, while it's well animated, um, this might just be a preference thing. I think, um, you know, you've got a nice, like, you've got nice mechanics with her, like, sort of stumbling back, but I would say those sort of uh, wavy arms are maybe a bit unnecessary. I don't know. Um, again, it's cartoony, so I, it's not something you really have to, like, change. It's just something that I would say that makes the shot very obviously cartoony and not so grounded. I personally would have gone for maybe like one wave like that, just one and then sort of settle into like a sort of solid like, ooh, like stance. But I think you've got like three of these waves and I, for me, it's a bit, um, a bit much and it takes away from the actual like, mechanics of of the shot i would say this this shot is something you know if you if you wanted if you wanted to stay in cartoons or go to like sony where they're pretty known for doing cartoony stuff i think you could get away with that stuff there as well i tend to do that at sony but if you want to go to like the more you know the bigger studios i would say they they want to see a bit more grounded mechanics and I'll be honest, I don't know if I'm even there to, to give many 
body mechanics notes, you know. For this, I can see some things like like where she's um, stepping here. I think you've got like one extra step right here. And something about the mechanics there um, feels kind of soft. I would imagine like this foot, this would already be coming down. And that way it sort of hit the ground here. And then this would come up. This leg would then come up. Right now it kind of looks like it's coming up at the same time. So everything flows nicely, but it doesn't feel as uh, physically real. It feels very soft. So I'd kind of want to see that foot come down. You could probably get a little like where where the where the hips currently do this nice arc. Whoop. Just they do this nice arc right now. I wonder if you could have like a little bump in the arc. I almost think that would keep it a little bit grounded, like, you know, might look a bit, you have to be careful of that looking too uh, busy, but I think it could do a little bit more of a, of a bump. I might have done that a little wrong. It would probably be more like that. Ignore what I just drew. I'm just going to scratch that out. I can't remember. I don't know how to erase on this thing, actually, to be fair. Oh, there it is. Oh, hopefully they cut this bit out. So yeah, a little bit of a bounce there. She's coming down in the hips. So like same here, where where the foot hits the ground. At this point, I'd imagine the hips are still going down. Then when the hip foot hits the ground, then she shoots up. But right now you've got this stretch in the in the chest as well as the hips going down so it doesn't feel like i don't feel the antic or the hit on the deck of the boat and then jump it feels quite soft throughout and maybe there'll be a, just here when that foot comes down she's still down and then boom then they then she stretches out this dive looks really lovely I wonder if the, the hands could be clasped together, but I don't want to be too like picky. It's just preferences stuff. And the thing is, more more I go through this, the more I can just pick on things. But I want to go through like the main main things. One of the main things here I notice with the hands when they're clapping um, feels like it's not um, as grounded as it could be. You've got this like waviness to the fingers. And I think sort of similar to what I was saying before, the overlap kind of might be a bit overkill here. I think, you know, keeping the hands stiff and, you know, like, oh, she's like, you know, a, a fast back and forth where she's like slapping her hands could look really nice, but the, the overlap in the fingers kind of softens that clap. And then you lose the silhouette for a second. So I wonder if you could keep it out like that and maybe keep a stiffer, Pose. I think that would make it feel a bit more grounded rather than right now it feels a bit too wavy. And the sound effects sound like a nice clap. It kind of feels wavy there. Um, right here, this, this I would say is a um, very subtle thing, but you've got like some twinning going on here where both, both arms are moving at the same time. Flows nice. Like you were, depending on the studio, you, you know, like. Sony might quite like that, you know, very like um, Hotel Transylvania, -y, you know, like cartoony. But I would imagine it would look kind of nice if you kept this arm out, you know, still out there while this one's moving in, just to break it up, just the tiniest bit. And you know, like rather than them both doing the same pose, um, you know, that's that that's your A pose, and then it's going up to the clap. But you could get like this hand up there first as that one goes you know I'm, I'm really exaggerating it here but you know it could come up and then you know but right now they're both moved together i want to see that not happen you know this if you had more time i mean obviously you can stretch the shot as much as you want you it would be nice to see like 
maybe like here just a little bit of her like smiling like just before she goes into that into the crowd. that way you can sort of see her thought process a bit more but then you know it's cartoony so you don't necessarily need that i just think it's very pose to posey and that it works but i think i can't see as much like thought process for her so seeing it seeing her look and sort of smiling as he's going in so it's like a build up and then and then she goes into a clap that could look kind of nice just a little bit a little bit more than what you've currently got uh one of the other notes was similar to that which is i think you kind of you've got like your transitions between your like key poses seem quite i don't want to say linear but they're very smooth and I think maybe they could be broken up a bit more. So here's your A pose and there's your B pose here. And right now she's sort of just, uh, if I get rid of these drawings quickly, she sort of just like um, kind of slides into place here. Like, you know, the hands overlap, it works nicely, but I think again, depending on how grounded you want it, how like realistic you want it, I'd want to, I personally would want to see something a bit more like you know, she's leaning on her hand and then, you know, what's she leading with? She's maybe leading with this hand. So she kind of leans a little bit, but this hand moves first and kind of gets into place as she then moves that other hand. Right now, everything kind of moves together here. Boom, boom, like these two frames. So I would imagine something like, say by this frame, her head's still here while this arm starts moving. Um, really depends how you want to do this. Oh, just delete this one. Maybe our uh, hand's still up here as, it's, as this arm's like getting into place. You know, maybe like maybe she's leading with that hand. Just so that you don't get everything moving, like both hands coming out like that. Now, I don't want to be, I don't want to tell you exactly how to do it. It's totally up to you. Like you could have, you know, a head, you could have a head leading while this, this arm that's um, holding onto the boat kind of stays there. So it's, you could have it so that this arm is still there as the head leads. But right now, my main note is just that everything's moving together. I just want to see a little bit more something leading with something else sticking around you know pick the thing that you're gonna lead with and hold everything back see these this is the this is where it's most obvious between these two frames everything's moving you know how could you get that so that something is still left behind wonder if very, this is very very like subtle polishy stuff but where the if i was to follow the arc of the the hips just there they go up and then they come come down like that kind of thing um i think it could be nice if they went like up you know there's it rather than just straight down they've got a little bit more let me just say that x translation so if you watch them they kind of stop and then just go down rather than like going across a little bit. I would just keep it a tiny bit more grounded there. Yeah, this is really nice. We've got a really nice like um, overlap of the hair. Um, it looks like you've probably grabbed all the controls and done them together, I'm guessing, like, because the poses are very similar. So I wonder if you could do a little bit more offset between the four strands of hair. I mean, this is very, very like subtle polishy stuff. I would say, now I'm getting into just the really specific stuff, you know, same here, like you've got the, the twinning of that arms, it'd be nice if like this hand was still out as this one was coming up. And like, again, you know, it's like, you know, there's room to break the rig when it's, because it's cartoony, but like your hand would never be able to do that. So I'd want to see that maybe for like, um, I was going to say one frame, but to be fair, you kind of do have it for one frame. It just feels, um, maybe I'm just picking up on the fact that everything feels a bit more 
mm, like loose. I'd want to see things be a bit stiffer. And one final note then would be, this is nice, the hold, but uh, I just wanted to say a facial expression, something, I don't know, that kind of looks like the default rig, uh, maybe like a, maybe, maybe that isn't, maybe something like the mouth open or something, but then again, it's Pokemon, this is just preference now, maybe that's actually how they should look and I should shut up, uh, and the head rotation here. I would imagine that the head, you know, would be rotated a tiny bit more in this way. Is that in X maybe? Because I think you'll just keep the flow nice here. Yeah. The head, the head just kind of leads everything. That's very subtle, that one. Like it, same here. Probably be down a bit like there. For whipping up. I mean, this is just very voluntary stuff. If you if you go through this and you really want to like polish up, a little bit more width there. You know, it's, this is taste. I think I think you've got a cartoony feel to the shot, and I think I'm trying to push you towards more grounded and you know, thing. Uh, I suppose like. Um, one other thing would be the boat. I think throughout you could probably have a little bit more float to it. You know, right when I scroll just through like the first 24 frames, the boat barely moves. And I just, just want to see it like, you know, with a little bit more of a bob to it. This is just small polishy stuff. Uh, overall, the shot looks lovely and it's clearly well animated and you clearly know what you're doing. So I'm just throwing in a few things that hopefully might help in your next shot. Really nice stuff with the 2D animation as well. Really nice. All right. Cheers, and hopefully, hopefully that's useful for your next shot. Take care.